Hello, everyone. Well, what a day has it been. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. I'm super happy that I'm here today. And I'm also super happy that you are here with me today. Let me start with a few questions. Well, I'm here to talk about music and also about artificial intelligence. First question. Who of you considers themselves being a musician? Okay, perfect, perfect, very good audience. And also, who of you listens to music on a regular basis? I tell you, you're all musicians, but you don't know it yet. <laughs> when I was a kid, and as you can tell, well, it was yesterday, right? I borrowed um, my grandfather's musical keyboard, a tiny little device with lots of keys, lots of buttons. And I used it to play a song, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go by Wham. So, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go and Leave Me Hanging On Like a Yo Yo. Very good song, awesome song. Published in 1984. In Germany, it only made it to position number two in the weekly charts. Forgiven, but not forgotten. And, um, well, I played it regularly, maybe to the dismay of my parents. So, hi, mom, hi, dad. And I played it on this keyboard, not as you might imagine, I pushed the demo button. So, and every time I pushed the button, it played the entire song and also showed off this tiny little device what are the different, different um, possibilities of sound that you can immerse yourself in. Well, was this composing music? No. It was enjoying music, listening to some music that someone else programmed. But on the other hand, it's a very cool, like, versatile device. You can play music on it. You can play music on it with different instruments. There's like strings in it, there's piano in it, there's even a guitar in it, and some drums. And if you like record a few pieces of these and layer them on top of each other, maybe you come up with some music. Is it hard to compose music? What do you think? Is it hard? Yes? No? Is it rocket science? <laughs> Is rocket science like composing music? Well, I would like to ask you to keep this question in mind. What does it mean? What do you have to do if you would like to compose a piece of music? Who's that? AI-generated Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Um, born in 1756. He died in 1791 at the age of 35, and he is, well, well known. He's more than an echo in our memories. Um, what is the first song that comes to mind when I ask you about Mozart? Kleinachmusik? Dum, 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 dum. Rum, dum, da, 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 dum. You know, you know, it's how it works, how it works. It's a very, very interesting principle. Like predicting what is next is very, very important. So, what does it mean if you would like to compose music in the style of Mozart? Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I mean, he learned music when he was a small child, because his, his um, musician father was uh, very serious about this, and he taught his two kids, his, his sister and uh, Mozart himself, to play multiple instruments and also composing music. I think he was, I would say, five years old when he composed his first piece of music. But again, what does it mean to compose music? Fortunately, there was a time where a lot of people were able to compose like Mozart without learning too much. There was a musical dice game, musikalisches Würfelspiel, a game of dice. The idea is that you buy this, it's a couple of sheets of paper. It was published in 1792 by Mozart's publisher Simrock in Bonn, I think it says. And the only thing that you have to be capable of, which is a learnable skill, that you can read music, notes, and you play them maybe on the piano. No harmony theory whatsoever. Only playing a note or multiple notes on the piano. How is this game played? You need your piano, you have to be able to read music, and you have to have two dice. So what you would do is, there's a, there's a table in the middle, it has columns, it has rows, and you would go through the columns, first column. You throw the dice, you sum up the numbers, and then you go to the row in that column. And this row has a certain number in it, and this number points to the right side. There's another table with tiny little pieces of music. Then you go to the second column. 
you roll the dice again. It's a different number, a different sum, a different position in this piece of music. And you do it, and do it, and do it, and do it, and do it, until you move through this, this middle table from the left to the right. And then you play it. Those are finite possibilities, right? You can exhaust it. So there's nothing, maybe there's no variance in it. Do you have a feeling like how many combinations those are? A lot. So the beginnings are easy, right? You have 11 different beginnings. So this might be a little bit boring. But when you go to the next column, you have 11 beginnings and, and 11 continuations. So now you're, one, you're up to 121. And if you complete the math, maybe there are a couple of repetitions, those are 700 trillion possibilities. Not possible for you to play them in their entirety. But if you just play this game, you compose a piece of music in the style of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. It's like his hand guiding your hands through music. You don't have to learn anything. Music. I'll just come to the bottom of things. Like, What do you have to learn if you would like to compose music? Music theory. You have to learn about notes. So notes are different frequencies from low to high. And you have everything in between. The notes that you see on the piano, the white notes, there are also black notes. What are black notes? Um, then there is something like a melody. Kleine Nachtmusik. Means that you have different notes, different pitches. And also you have a rhythm in it. So some notes are longer, some are shorter. And once you have a melody, well, you could stop there or you would continue. And continuing means you add some accompaniment. Maybe you have first voice, and to this voice, you add another voice. Maybe a second instrument, or a third instrument, or fourth, or six, or seven. If you have an orchestra, you have a whole big sheet of music that all the different instruments are playing, which is also something you have to learn. This translates to, if you would like to learn composition, you have to learn a lot of rules. If you would like to compose music in a certain style, maybe of Mozart, those are a lot of rules that you have to learn and also to apply. If you would like to play a completely different thing, like rock music, I mean, we started the day with rock music, then you have to learn about the rules of a guitar, of a bass guitar that you also add, of the drums, and then, of course, of how to sing in rock and roll. If you go from rock and roll to heavy metal music, which obviously is something that I prefer, you have quite a lot of like new rules on top of that, like which notes to play, which notes not to play, and so on and so forth. And oh, of course, let's not forget, I'm talking about rules, 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 rules all the time. Once you have those rules, you occasionally have to break them to create something new. You don't have to stick to those. Enter artificial intelligence. Think about again, what does it mean to compose? And how do I teach an artificial intelligence to compose music? Well, artificial intelligence has been around for decades. Deep neural networks, are they new? Neural networks? It's always a question that I ask when I teach the topic. Deep ne no, neural networks, artificial neural networks were created in the 1940s. So I was not around then. <laughs> I'm a little younger, but they're already invented. But due to like, limitations in computation, they never really lifted off. Recently, they did. It was, I guess there is a certain web page that you go to a regular, on a regular basis, and you put in some text, and you get some text in return, right? Everyone does that. Everyone, trust me, trust me. Every time I ask people, everyone raises their hand. Um, how do neural networks learn? You give them data to train on. First you initialize them, and they are just empty brains. They know nothing. And then you expose them to data. For example, pictures. If you give them a lot of pictures, they may, might be able to generate pictures. If you give them text, they generate text. If you give them music, they generate music. And the only thing that you have to do is, you have to allow this untrained neural network to play a game. And the game is as follows. If there's one note, which one could be the next one? Or, if you have a couple of notes, which note might follow? And then you ask the second question. If you have like, a few notes, you predict another note, 
What is the note that could follow? Could follow, could follow, could follow, could follow. So you would go from left to right through the entire composition. Also, next level of the game is, if you have a melody for an instrument, what is the first note for the second instrument? What is the second note, the third note, and so on and so forth. Like the tool that you are using all the time in text, predicting the next word or token, as we cool people talk, talk and tell it, composing music, music, music. You have to train this neural network, usually take some dedicated hardware, a little stronger hardware that you usually don't have at home. Once it's trained, you will deploy it to production, which means you have it maybe on your smartphone, or it's on, your, on, on other devices, maybe you have some gaming PC at home, you can run these things at home. There, you don't need supercomputing powers. The trouble with that one is, it doesn't learn anymore. Once it has been trained, it doesn't learn anything. When you think about it, what happens if you would give the neural network during training the music of, which was the band that we had today, Beastie Boys? Then it would be able to compose more music in the style of Beastie Boys. Would it be able to compose Beethoven? No, and vice versa. If you train a neural network on the collected works of Beethoven, would it be able to create um, songs like Metallica? doesn't work, because you are limited in the domain. Deep neural networks, and part of my French, are quite stupid, because they only can work with the data that they have been trained on. They don't go beyond that. What if you would train a neural network on the works by Johann Sebastian Bach? You would get music in the style of Johann Sebastian Bach. And here, I'll treat you. I have a demo for you. Somewhere, somewhere there, is a deep neural network trained on works in the style of Johann Sebastian Bach. Chorales. Do you know what a chorale is? Lift your hands if you know what a chorale is. Church music. So when you go to church, so maybe tomorrow would be an opportunity to check. You go to church, there is sometimes some singing, and usually singing comes in multiple voices. So if the soprano, alto, and the tenor, and the bass. So usually you have one voice singing some kind of melody, and you have three more voices singing an accompaniment. And if I would train a neural network on a data set of 300, 400, 500 pieces of music that looked like that, always predicting the next word, the next token, the next note, I would get a deep neural network that would be able to compose music in the style of Johann Sebastian Bach. Let's play something. Do you want another one? <laughs> trick question, trick question. When it comes to the harmonies, absolutely sound, almost perfect. You could change the temperature a little and then it would get a little bit um, chaotic. Again, you cannot use this to compose um, heavy metal or other kinds of music. It's very restricted. But on the other hand, if you train a neural network on all the heavy metal music you can get your hands on, you will get a heavy metal generator. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this is a new kind of musikalisches Würfelspiel. Instead of going through just a few different combinations, like 700 trillion a few combinations of music, like going through them randomly, lift it on a completely different level. Start on a note level. So if you have a note, what are the next notes that could follow? Usually three or four different notes, and then you randomly decide amongst those candidates which one to take next, and you continue and continue and continue and continue and continue. The chance that you would generate something that is um, more like a copy, is very rare. So I've been using these neural networks and I usually it, it takes like thousands of combinations or generations until it runs into something that resembles a song that I know. So it kind of is possible to find songs that are between the songs. And this, from my point of view, is a very, very exciting tool that you can use. First of all, 
When you compose music, the first thing is there's the dread of the white paper. You don't have anything. This neural network can give you like a tiny little piece of music, and then you're, ah, maybe mm, not so good. Let's take another one. Ah, now I'm inspired. This is my melody. And then you say, okay, let's add some drums to it. Maybe you do the drums yourself because you have a melody and then ah, the rhythm is in it, or you let the AI generate something else. If you already have a couple of voices, maybe you improvise something on your guitar, or you ask the AI to generate another riff for you. And this tells you that you can enter into a, like a dialogue, a creative dialogue with artificial intelligence. And I have to stress this, that I mean a dialogue. It's not push-button magic, where you push a button, and then you would get a piece of music, like a full piece of music generated, and then, well, you go famous, right? Not like Wham, you would go to number one in the German charts, not two. No, no, it's always the, the creative interplay of two intelligences. Your musical intelligence, plus all the emotions that you have, plus all the inspiration you gather from your entire life, plus all the other fancy things that you're interested in, plus the, I would say, almost precise musical intelligence of those deep neural networks, playing together, and then you would get, I would say, music that has never existed before. Would this make your life easier? Like if you push a button and you get some notes out of it? It would, and you don't even have to read music anymore, right? <laughs> don't have to do this. Man. And that's the, the, the whole story. And this story translates to artificial intelligence today in general. That artificial intelligence comes here as a tool that you can use to augment your own productivity and creativity. And my invitation is, when we are living in awesome times, Give it a try. Maybe you're interested in music, find Music AI and try it. If you are interested in writing, they're writing AIs. If you're interested in writing computer code, they're coding AIs. And find out how far you can get, how quickly you are going to learn. Spoiler, you will learn a lot very quickly if you interact with these AIs. So you will always have some assistant that is always there to help you, and this gives you an augmentation of your own productivity and creativity. What a time to be alive. Thank you very much.